Hello everybody, welcome back to another Mystic Islands video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're back with another tier list. This time we're doing the Mage Faction. But today we're, we're here to talk about the cards themselves. So right off the bat, the Mage Faction is kind of like the anti-meta faction. To be honest, they are kind of going against what the goblins and the pirates are trying to do. The mages kind of sit back and they say, yeah, you can draw all those cards all you want. You're not getting past me and I'm going to beat you at my own pace. So it's pretty cool seeing people mix mage faction with other things to take down these meta decks. So we're going to start off with Aqua Mage, standard one attack, one defense with no effect. He is D tier. Um, I have to stay consistent with that because all creatures that have no effect don't give you a great advantage unless they have good stats. So we got Peaceful Spellcaster, cost three, one attack, four defense. For every Peaceful Spellcaster on the battlefield, gain one defense on this creature till death. So basically, I didn't think this card was very good, but then if you really read it, pretty much if you cast another Peaceful Spellcaster, it's going to buff both of them. If you cast another one, it's going to buff all three once again, and they can get kind of out of control. I don't know if people have tried to use this strategy yet, but it is, uh, it's obviously a very defensive strategy, but I would honestly put it in A tier. Gloomy Mage, cost five, six attack, four defense. You can pay one, and this creature gets minus two attack and plus two defense until the turn ends. So this is a good way of, if your opponent is trying to bloodthirsty it, if you pay, as long as it's your turn, you can save Gloomy Mage's life. I don't know if that's the greatest creature you'd want to play because it costs five and you have to pay just to keep it alive if something accidentally happens there. Um, I'm going to throw it in C tier. I don't really know where else I would put this. It's probably right in the middle. Noble Pyromancer, cost two, three attack, two defense, good stats, and when casted, discard a card and gain one health. So you got a pretty big downside and a tiny bit of upside right there. The attack value is pretty good though, so I will throw this into B tier. Discarding a card obviously really hurts. Supreme Spellcaster, cost six, six attack, seven defense. As long as this creature's on the battlefield, all mage ability cards cost one less as long as they cost, as long as they cost three or more. This card's effect is very good. The problem is it is a super expensive tank to get out. So I'd probably have to throw it into C tier set one when the meta was kind of creating itself and people were using bigger creatures. This card was pretty great, but it is just tough to get out with how many quick decks there are right now. We got Pyro Screen, cost three, prevent all damage dealt by creatures that aren't Mage Faction to a caster of choice this turn. This has saved me definitely more than once. It does have the downside of being useless against mage faction creatures, but it's decently rare you go against a mirror match anyway. So, Pyro Screen is going to go in B tier. Pretty good card right there, it just costs 3, so that's the tough part. Wicked Witch, cost 2, 2 attack, 2 defense. Every time this creature attacks your opponent, they discard a card if possible. This is horrible, we're going to throw it in F. Just kidding, this is a, a completely broken card, it is banned in almost every format. And I don't even want to look at that card because it stresses me out. Possession Wizard, cost two, one attack, two defense. When casted, take the top card of your opponent's deck and banish it. After one round, you just put it back on top of the deck. This really doesn't do much except give you a little bit more information about the top of their deck. So I would probably put it in C tier. It's not going to do that much for you and the stats aren't really great. So it's kind of right in the middle. Wise Spellcaster, cost three, two attack, four defense. When this creature enters the battlefield, your opponent either taps one of their creatures discards a chaos crystal or loses three health they choose so obviously if they can't do the first two they have to do the last one i love this card i'm gonna throw this card in s tier i think just forcing your opponent to do something that they don't want to do is going to be great plus the stats on it are pretty solid as well can be bloodthirsty but it's not going to be a huge deal as you still got your effect off flame atronach cost five five attack two defense pretty horrible stats now that we look at it later in the game but it does have Amber, so every time it hits my opponent, it's going to get plus one attack, plus one defense. But it only has a limit of three, so it can be an 8-5 if you power it up, but the chances that it stays alive that long is going to be really slim. I'm going to honestly throw this one in D tier. Although I do love this card and the concept of it, the execution was not great on it. Underground Soul Mage, cost one, one attack, one defense. When casted, your opponent puts the top card of their deck in the graveyard. So this actually just mills your opponent's deck. Doesn't sound like it's the greatest effect, but honestly, I love this card because it gets rid of your opponent's Bloodthirsties, the removal, the key cards that they want, and you just get to play a 1-1. You get that effect for one crystal, and you get a body. So, I love it. We're going to throw it in A tier. Ritual Madness, cost 4. 
Every time your opponent draws a card, they lose one health. If this card is destroyed, add a crystal to your stash, and that's a permanent ability card. So that will happen every single turn. Anytime they draw a card, they lose one health. If they destroy it, you get a crystal back as well. This is great because even if you discard this card, you still get that crystal back for nothing. And every single deck draws a card at the beginning of the turn. I don't care who you are. So this is pretty much good against any deck. It does cost four. If it costed three, it would be S tier, but I'm going to throw it in A tier. I still love this card. Wizard Outcast cost three, three attack, three defense, untapped. Eh, you know, pretty meh, but guess what? This card is awesome. B tier, this card is a great, great way to just flip momentum with the mage faction as they don't have too many speedy guys, so he's definitely one of the most important ones that you could throw in your deck, probably. Lord of the Spellcasters, six chaos crystals or 10 health. He has 12 defense. Give all mage faction creatures the idle skill this turn. That is a very underrated skill. You can pay to look at the top card of your deck, that's not as good. Then you can search your deck for a Mage Faction creature that costs one and put it in your hand, shuffle your deck. Honestly, not bad at all. You have a tiny search engine there, just creatures worth one. And you do get to turn things idle. I'm going to throw it in B tier. It's still a good leader. One of the most underrated leaders in the game, I would say. And if you're just trying to keep your creatures around, this is probably one of the best ones to do it. Safeguarding Soul. This dude only plays defense pretty much. Costs three, zero attack, five defense. Idle, can't be affected by any ability cards, and he can't even attack. Um, so he's literally, as soon as you cast him, boom. Put him out there, untap him the next turn. You don't even have to worry about him. He's just going to sit there and soak up damage from your opponent. He won't kill anything, so they can't they can't force kill their creature with him. He's honestly great. I'm going to throw him into A tier. I love Safeguarding Soul. What an annoyance it is to go against him, but he is a good card. We got Fireball, so we got two of the artworks right here. Uh, this one was the art that was going to release until we went digital. So target creature takes four damage and it's idle. So you can't stop this ability card whatsoever. It's just four damage straight to your opponent's creature. Great card. Only thing is it costs three. If it costed two, it would be S tier, but we're throwing it in A tier. We're going to throw both versions of it in there. We got flame Atronach cost four, six attack, two defense. If flame Atronach is currently on the battlefield, give this creature plus two attack until death. And he has Obstruct. So Obstruct is great because he can, he only has two defense, so he can soak up any damage. If Atronach is on the battlefield, though, he gets a little bit bigger. Um, not a great card, though. I don't know if it's worth pulling off that combo since he has Obstruct anyway. So I would probably just run Frost Atronach by himself. He's a little bit better than Flame Atronach. Cheaper with better attack. Azure Wisp. Definitely a weird card. Cost one. One attack and zero defense. Theoretically, he should die, but but his text states, this creature cannot die unless killed by an opposing creature. When it dies, you put a plus one attack, plus one defense on a mage faction creature you control. One of my favorite combos is Azure Wisp and Safeguarding Soul. That's gonna be an S tier card also, by the way. So I can kill my Wisp to buff my Safeguarding Soul to a one six idle. That is pretty good as well, although they can force kill things on it. Binding Electricity. Have you ever seen Forbidden Spell but just better? Well, here it is. Cost one, destroy target ability card, and it has no effect. And then you deal one damage to the opposing caster, just for fun. I love this card, S tier for sure. Poised Druid, cost two, one attack, two defense. When casted, you may free play an ability card in your hand worth one or less. The problem with this card is that it's pretty slim that you're gonna have an ability card worth one or less in your hand, but it's not bad. I'm gonna throw it in C tier. Marletta the Forest Druid. Cost 6. 6 attack, 7 defense. When casted, choose 1. You can tap a target creature. Look at the top card of your deck. Cast a creature worth 1 for free this turn. It's most likely that you're going to cast that creature for free just because you can get a little numbers advantage. Um, but because this card costs so much, it's so hard to play. I'm going to throw it in C tier. Um, not the greatest rare, I'll be honest. Amulet of Sorcery. Here's another amulet card. Cost 4. As long as this card is active, you may pay 1 crystal once per turn. If you do... One of your creatures is not affected by ability cards this turn. Now this is really good if you're going for a deck with a huge creature that you really don't want to die. But besides that, uh, it's a lot of crystals to do this simple effect. Probably going to throw it in D tier. Just written in stone, cost three. All ability cards this turn have no effect and permanent ability cards are not destroyed and it's idle. So this is basically saying, yeah, this turn, any ability card you cast means nothing and you can't negate written in stone. The cool thing about it is if you cast any other idle ability cards, they're also not affected by written in stone because they're not affected by anything either. 
It gets a little complicated there, but Written in Stone is pretty decent. I'm going to throw it in B tier. Joom the Warlock, one of my personal favorites. Cost 3, 4 attack, 2 defense. He's idle, which is huge because he has 2 defense there. And every time this creature kills another creature, target caster discards a card. There's our favorite effect again, discarding cards. Joom the Warlock is an S tier card. Anytime that you can get cards out of your opponent's hand in Mystic Islands, that is definitely something you'd probably want to do. Pyromage, cost 1, 1 attack, 1 defense. When this creature is casted, your opponent discards a card of their choice. Again, with discarding cards, this one's actually half banned. It's limited to 2, and that is also an S tier card. The fact that you just get to discard your opponent's hand just for casting a 1-1 is great. Plus, he combos with Aqua Mage with Obsidian Serpent right here. Cost 4, 4 tech, 4 defense. If you sacrifice an Aqua Mage and a Pyro Mage on the battlefield, you get to cast it for free. It's actually a pretty good combo, but then that means you have to run Aqua Mage, so it does bring down the archetype a little bit. I will throw it into B tier though. We got Wizardly Scholar. Cost 2, 2 attack, 2 defense. Not the best, it's just a generic card. We're going to throw it in D tier. Look to the future, cost 1, look at the top 3 cards of your deck, put them back in any order. I'm going to be honest, this card might be uh, D or F, I'll probably put it in F. Um, just not great for what it is. I guess if you use Poised Druid, you could just get that effect for free, which is good. But besides that, it's not too good. Then we got Mistress of Magic. Costs 6 crystals or 10 health. Has 11 defense. It's a tap target creature worth 2 or less. All mage faction cards get plus 1 defense this turn only. Can add some health to her as well. And you can pay a little bit of expensive costs here, but if your opponent has 3 or more creatures on the battlefield, they have to sacrifice one. That is a pretty good effect as well. Um, I gotta see where I want to put this. I'll probably put it in A tier. It's going to be better than Lord of the Spellcaster. So it's going to conclude our tier list on the Mage Faction cards. As you can see, it's honestly pretty even throughout the faction. So you have a good amount of S, good amount of A, good amount of B. So it's a pretty solid faction. So let me know if I got any of these cards wrong and you feel differently down in the comments below. Can't wait to show you guys more cards from set three as they release. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace.